Welcome to this video, Knowledges in the Context of the Divine Will. Knowledges tends to be one of those subjects which are of prime interest in the Divine Will. And if you're interested in a video concerning Knowledges, you're very interested in learning all you can about the Divine Will. And perhaps our Lord has even prepared you during your life for living in the divine will even before you even heard the words Louisa Picaretta. Let us begin in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The knowledges themselves that are communicated by Jesus to Louisa about the divine will have infinite value, very similar to an act. And we're going to assume in this video you understand the nature of the divine act. And if you do not, I'll please refer you back to a video on the eternal act. That will give you an understanding of both divine acts and the continuous eternal act as well. But the knowledges of the divine will and their communication have the creative power behind them of Jesus. And I mentioned it's similar to a divine act. And the reason why it is, is because the communication of the knowledge whether it's in written form or it's spoken, is itself a divine act. It proceeds from the beginning divine act of Jesus to Louisa. And you might ask, well, this communication occurred to Louisa, so does it still have that nature? Does it still have the nature of the act and does it still have the infinite value and the answer is yes because the nature of a divine act it has no ending so like an act that we do in our human will in our human lives regardless of what it is it has a beginning and an end but the divine act and the divine nature transcends time. So that communication to Louisa and then the communication to you via Louisa's writings or via some discussion is still the continuous act of the first act of communication of that knowledge. First reading is volume 23, December 30th, 1927. One single knowledge of mine has more value than the whole creation together. In fact, my knowledge is of immense value, infinite and without limit. And as it comes out of us, wherever it reaches, it generates and multiplies to infinity the good and the light it contains. It is the true regenerator of the divine life. And one very quick sentence from volume 19, June 15th, 1926. Each knowledge I have given you about my will contains a creative power. And one more is very short reading. Volume 29, August 3rd, 1931. Each of our knowledges brings its own distinct gift. One brings its light. One the strength. One the goodness. One the wisdom. One the love. And so forth. Each of them binds a creature to God in a special way. And God to her. This is why you hear people who are experienced in living in the divine will 
emphasize the importance of the readings of Louisa's writings. And when you're finished reading, you will often hear them say, keep studying, keep studying. You, by the time you finish your reading, you'll be at a point where you're more advanced and you're able to receive the knowledge that's being transmitted to you. But besides the reading, just as important is to live in the divine will. It's to practice the divine will in your actions during the day and contemplating the rounds as well. The nature of your acts and the knowledges are mutually supporting each other. Also, it's very important to understand that you must live in the divine will in order to receive these knowledges. And we'll explain more about that later. The next reading is volume 29, September 16, 1931. This is why many times I am waiting for the completion of your acts to give you the surprise of letting you know other truths. These, like many breaths of light and heat, finish maturing in your soul the goods and the truths that your Jesus has communicated to you. See then the necessity of your acts in order to dispose yourself to receive other knowledges on my divine fiat and to let me find in you the continuation of your acts in order to render them mature. In order to receive these knowledges and the gifts that they contain, you must first, of course, accept the divine will. You must take that first step in faith. Also, you must dispose yourself to living in the divine will, and you must live it. And also, of course, you must put an effort in to read and absorb these knowledges. Let us take a look at one other reading. It's a very quick one regarding disposing ourselves. Volume 30, April 30th, 1932. Now one who disposes herself to doing our volition prepares the place, the decency, the nobility for where to be able to put this gift so great and infinite. Our knowledges on the fiat will help and prepare her in a surprising way to receive this gift. So, as mentioned in the early reading, the knowledges have their own distinct gift. One is light, one is wisdom, one is love, and so forth, as was discussed. And very much like a divine act, the knowledge and the act help prepare and dispose us for living in the divine will and help us advance in the divine will itself. Now to emphasize the importance of what we described, in other words, the necessity of living in the divine will in order to understand and receive these knowledges, let's look at the opposite. So I, I've seen situations where there's very intelligent knowledgeable and highly educated people who read these writings and just do not understand them. And there's a couple of things happening here. One, as mentioned, they haven't taken that first step forward and accepted it as true. And they haven't tried to live the divine will. And there's a certain, let's call it veiling, that God does to the human intellect when they attempt to understand these writings. However, they're unwilling to live or take that first step that we mentioned in the divine will. There's a couple excerpts here that will clarify it for you. The first is from volume 36, November 13th, 1938. 
my daughter to experience, to possess what my will can do, creatures need to be inside of it. Otherwise, they won't understand a thing. Now, the question may be, why is that the case? Why, why does Jesus not want us to easily understand these writings? In other words, why doesn't he want us to pick up these writings and read them and say, yes, I understand, and I'm going to, in other words, I understand these writings, I'm going to live in a divine will based upon what I see here. The reason being is that it has to do with the communication of knowledge and the responsibility entailed within that communication. In other words, the more knowledge that we have, the more responsibility that we have. Um, right now, we live in faith. And there's a certain obscurity within faith so that if sin occurs, you're not committing sin with the full knowledge of God. So to take things to extreme, extreme examples sometimes help clarify. Someone living in the fourth degree of the divine will, they, they live with knowledge of God. The God permeates their whole existence. They have one foot in heaven and one foot on the earth. If they committed a sin, their fall would be great because the responsibility of that knowledge is such that they would be committing sin with no, full knowledge of God, very much like the angels. And that's another extreme example. The angels have the beatific vision, and if they commit a sin of pride, their fall is great. The bottom line is that Jesus wants us to receive these knowledges and understand them when we read them, but to do so, we must live in his divine will and trust him, taking that first step and asking for his divine will to reign within us. And Jesus takes this approach to protect us and also to make sure that these knowledges obtain fruit from those he gives them to, because that's the other aspect of it. This is a gift. Let's take another reading to, again, confirm what's being said here regarding this veiling. On the other hand, when one does not do my divine will, we must adapt ourselves, restrict ourselves, nor can we be abundant according to our divine way. The human intelligence without our will is like a foggy sky that obscuring the beautiful light of reason is blind before the light of our knowledges. And that is volume 33, January 2nd, 1934. Another reason that God does this veiling with our human reason is for timing purposes. And God allows certain information or knowledge to be revealed to us when the timing is the best for souls. This actually is what happened on the road to Emmaus. So let's take a look at the Bible. And I want to also show that this is consistent with teaching in the Bible as well. In the Gospel of Luke, chapter 24, verses 13 through 16. And behold, two of them went the same day to a town which was 60 furlongs from Jerusalem, named Emmaus. And they talked together of all these things which had happened. And it came to pass that while they talked and reasoned with themselves, Jesus himself also, drawing near, went with them. But their eyes were held that they should not know him. And we know the rest of that story that they asked Jesus to stay and they recognized Jesus in the breaking of the bread. And it was the reason for timing in this situation. They wanted the, the apostles 
to recognize Jesus in the sacrament of the Holy Eucharist. Jesus was to ascend to the Father, would not walk amongst them any, any longer, but he would leave himself in the sacrament of the Holy Eucharist. And he wanted to impart that information, that knowledge, and emphasize it to the apostles. And that's why he held their reason, the ability to see him, until the very moment that he broke the bread. Another example in the Gospel is the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 13, verses 13 and 14. Therefore do I speak to them in parables, because seeing they see not, and hearing they hear not, neither do they understand. And the prophecy of Isaiah is fulfilled in them, who said, By hearing you shall hear, and shall not understand, and seeing you shall see, and shall perceive not. And in this case, he knew what was to happen, the crucifixion. And again, knowledge would be withheld in this situation because this knowledge would make them more guilty in the end and would increase their sin because in the end they rejected Jesus and crucified him. Now to be theologically correct, we have to talk about knowledge as a gift, just like the divine will is a gift of God. We have to bear that in mind. So God can provide these knowledges to whomever and whenever he pleases, because it is a gift. Just like in our treatment of the owner of the vineyard who paid his denarius to one who toiled all day in the vineyard. And he could give the same denarius to one who came and was only one second in the vineyard. And the reason being because that denarius is the owner of the vineyard's denarius to give. And he can do with it as he pleases. Now, that being said, I'm only pointing out that it is possible. It is possible for God to provide knowledge to someone who's not prepared. Even someone who has not even heard of Luisa Picaretta can receive knowledge of the divine will from God if that's his desire. And I could use the example of St. Paul in his conversion was the life St. Paul lived prior to his conversion. Did that warrant the gift that God gave him of faith? No, it didn't. Not at all. And that faith of St. Paul was turned on just as if it was a light switch. But that's not how it usually occurs. And the desire of this channel is to, to spread the gift of the design will and knowledge of it, and also to help people advance in the divine will. And bearing that in mind, we want to emphasize what is most probable and helpful for the viewer. To be thorough in our discussion regarding knowledges, we have to ask the question, why isn't this topic of knowledges similar to Gnosticism? Gnosticism was a first century heresy, and they believed many crazy things, but one of their tenets was that secret knowledge was required in order to achieve salvation. Now, based upon what we've outlined here, Knowledge by itself of the divine will can only be obtained through faith, through desire of it, through that first step, the willingness to live the divine will, and it must be lived. So in other words, we're talking about faith and works. We're not just talking about reading. We're talking about living it. And that is why it is not similar to Gnosticism. And let's have one more reading. This reading is from volume 28, March 9th, 1930. 
If you knew what a knowledge from my divine will means, and they contain the science of forming the life of it in order to form the people of its kingdom. If you wish to be notified regarding our subsequent videos on the divine will or Marian apparitions, please subscribe and liking this video will help us promote this content. Thank you for watching and God bless.